Hey there, Nicole here from NicoleZ.com, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I process one of my B photographs. I recently purchased the Fujifilm 80 millimeter macro, and I am having so much fun with this. One of my favorite subjects is to go around to flowers and chase bees and bugs and try to photograph them as in focus as possible. Now I kind of lucked out with this cute little bumblebee uh, probably just before it was gonna take off. You can see the wings start to flap there. And usually I use the electronic shutter on my camera, which is I think why the wings kind of have that curved look to them, but either way, I think it looks pretty neat. I'm inside of Lightroom and I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into processing this image. Now, the first thing I do is I try to improve the composition with a little bit of cropping. This is actually a fairly decent uh, composition in camera, but I'd like to kind of reposition that B so it's a little bit more in the top right third of the image. So I'm inside of that develop module and I'll go ahead and access the crop tool. You can do that by either clicking on the crop icon over there, or you can press R to jump to it pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and keep the aspect as the original and I'm just going to pull that crop from the top right and just move it around. And that might actually be pretty good. I might bring it in from the left a little bit to make that be a little bit larger. I'll press return when I'm finished and I like this crop, I'm happy with this. Next, I'd like to fix the color. It looks a little bit washed out, uh, but I know it wasn't like this when I photographed it. So I'm gonna head over to the basic panel and if I look here in the profile, I can see that by default, it's the Adobe Color Profile. Now, I photographed this with a Fujifilm camera, and Fujifilm has some really fantastic profiles inside of Lightroom that you can use to kind of bring back probably what you saw when you originally created the image. So I'm gonna click on this little grid icon on the right. I'm gonna make sure that I have the camera matching option selected. And if I hover over these, I can actually see a preview and the one I want is going to be the Velvia. Now, if I kind of toggle back and forth off of this, you can see the dramatic shift in color. Sometimes Velvia is a little too intense of color, but I actually think this is really perfect for this image. So I'm gonna click that to set that on my photo and then click close on the top right. One of the things that the profile did is it added a little bit of contrast and I want to bring back some of that detail in the body of the bee, which is kind of a dark black and kind of in the shadows. So I'm gonna go down to that shadow slider and increase it by moving it over to the right. And that helps bring back some of that detail. I'm also gonna go down to the texture slider. This is kind of like clarity. It just helps to kind of accentuate the textures in the photo. So I'm just gonna move that to the right. I'm just watching my photo as I'm doing that but I wanna be careful. I'm gonna zoom in to show you. This image was photographed at a little bit of a higher ISO. Uh, it was at ISO 2000. It was a cloudy day, uh, which actually gives better light, diffused lighting for this type of photograph, but it also introduced some grain to the image. And I need to be careful with that texture slider, and let me show you why. If I were to move it all the way to the right, I'm really kind of pulling out the texture of the grain a little too much. I'm gonna reset it, and I'm just going to increase it oh, maybe about a quarter of the way up, so at about 25. And that just does a nice job of, of adding texture but not overdoing it with the grain in the image. I'm also going to increase the vibrant slider a touch. I don't wanna to go too far though, because if I go too high, then it really starts to oversaturate. So I'm looking kind of for that sweet spot. Again, at about a plus 20, between 20 and 25 is pretty good for this photo. I'm gonna do a before and after. Let's see where it started. Things are looking really good so far. Um, but as I said previously, I have a little bit more grain in this photo than normal. So I'm going to try and address some of that here inside of Lightroom. First, I'm gonna zoom in because I like to see my images up close, especially in the area where I want to add the noise reduction. I also wanna make sure I can see some of kind of the out of focus areas as well, because that's mostly where I want a lot of the noise reduction to be removed from. But it's also important that I don't kind of smudge everything with noise reduction. So I'm gonna go down to that detail panel on the right. I'm gonna take that luminance slider. First, I'm gonna move it all the way to the right so you can see kind of what not to do. Now, of course, at 100, all of the noise is gone, 
but I've also kind of given the photo a painterly look. In a way, it kind of looks neat, but I want this to look more like a photograph and not a painting. So I'm going to bring that luminance slider down to about 30. And I'm going to toggle this off and on. I'm really focusing on the noise. And there's also some color noise that by default Lightroom almost always has set. So I'm going to see that before and after with the color noise as well. But I really just want to do as much as I can to get rid of or just kind of subdue the grain because it's okay to have a little bit of grain in a photograph. It's, it's not really a bad thing. You just don't want it to overwhelm the photo and be distracting. Now that is all I'm going to do here inside of Lightroom. Again, I'll do a before and after. Really brought back a lot of the beautiful color in this image. Next, I'm going to take this photo into Luminar so I can add a little bit of a finishing touch to it. This is actually really beautiful and I'd be very happy with this inside of Lightroom alone, but it's nice to add a little bit of kind of a boost to the photo and I'll show you some of the filters that I use. But before I jump into Luminar, I kind of like to use Photoshop as a pass through and I'll show you why as soon as I get there. So I'm going to go up to the menu. I'm going to go to Photo, Edit In, and I'm going to select Adobe Photoshop 2020. So here I am inside of Photoshop and I'm actually not really going to do anything in Photoshop to edit the photo. I'm going to use Luminar 4 as a plugin inside of Photoshop. And the reason I do it this way is because I like to apply the edits to a smart object. And the reason I do that is because it makes those edits re-editable down the road if I ever wanted to make changes. So I have that background layer selected. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control J, and that just duplicates the layer. And on this layer, I'm going to right click and select Convert to Smart Object. Now with that layer selected, that new smart object, I'm going to go up to Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar 4. This will launch Luminar as a plugin, and then I can just use it like I would uh, use Luminar if I were doing it standalone. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. I'll go ahead and hide those looks. I'm not going to use any today. I'm really only going to use a handful of filters here inside of Luminar. I'm going to go over to the right inside of the Essentials tab, and select AI Enhance. I'm going to increase the AI Accent Slider. I'm just going to watch my photo as I'm doing this. Sometimes I like to go all the way to the right, and that's too intense. So I'm going to bring it back about halfway, and I'll toggle that filter off and on. And that did a lot of really nice things to the tone and even some of the color. Speaking of color, another thing I like to test out is I go down to that color tool, and I like to see what happens if I move the Remove Color Cast slider around. Sometimes there's a subtle color cast in a photo you can't always see until you remove it. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to move it back and forth. And I can actually see it is, there's a subtle kind of a green color cast in here. If I toggle this off and on, it's very subtle, but it's noticeable and I really like uh, what it's doing. So I'm going to keep that there. I think this actually is a really good um, edit for this. One more filter I'm going to do, and I do this on almost every single photo that I edit inside of Luminar, I'm going to go into the Creative section. I'm going to select Mystical, and I'm just going to increase that amount. I don't want to go too crazy. All the way to the right makes it super glowy. I usually keep it between 20 and 30 or so, just kind of depending on the photo. Toggle that off and on, add some contrast, a tiny bit of saturation, and a little bit of glow. It's kind of like an Orton effect, which by the way, there is an Orton effect. And if you'd like to use that instead, let me toggle this off. If you go into the portrait settings, click Orton effect, and you can play with the Orton effect there. They're very similar. Um, I kind of go back and forth. I usually just use the mystical one because I'm typically inside of the creative uh, section or category a lot more often. So that's just the one I end up using. So now I'll go ahead and do a before and after. And that really, really improved the look of this image. I'm finished, so I'll go ahead and click Apply there in the top left. This will add all of these adjustments to this photo and apply it to the smart object here inside of Photoshop. And so now you can see if I were to toggle this off and on, all of those edits that I added inside of Luminar. 
And if I ever wanted to go back, let's say I, I did all of these edits and I noticed, oh, I wanted to make another change to those existing settings, I could just double click that Luminar 4 text there inside of the smart filters and it will reopen Luminar with those edits intact. Another benefit to adding uh, your edits inside of Photoshop on a separate layer is that you can always subdue it by reducing the opacity. So I can just take that opacity slider. Let's say I wanted to go maybe halfway with it. Now you can also do this inside of Luminar, um, but it's nice to have that control in Photoshop as well. So I'm going to leave everything at 100% here. I'm going to go ahead and save this photo with a Commander Control S keyboard shortcut. And now I can go ahead and close this file and I'll go back over to Lightroom. Let's go ahead and check it out. And here's my before image before it went into Photoshop and here's my after my final image.